So here's how I got into Art Bell. And I know everybody's um, journey is a bit different. But um, my aunt was a MFCC, like a therapist or some shit. And she was really into talk radio. She was crazy into like Dr. Laura. Um, I don't think she agreed with like Dr. Laura's fucking political stance because Dr. Laura's kind of fucking crazy. But, um, you know, I, I just think she liked talk radio. And I hung out with Aunt Joan a whole bunch in the early 90s. So by the time I was like 14, I was listening to talk radio instead of like music. Like I was a fucking weirdo. This was the first call that I ever heard from Art Bell um, that made me say like, oh shit, like I really kind of have to keep listening to this guy uh, because he's talking about stuff that you're not going to hear anywhere else. And you have to remember this was... This was the mid '90s, so this sort of shit, this like, <clears throat> if you ask me, Area 51 is known because Art Bell put it out there like that. You know, him, Bob Lazar, George Knapp, all that sort of shit. In 2023, all this paranormal shit is 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 everywhere. It wasn't like that in the mid '90s. It legit was not like that, and so partially me doing these Art Bell little mixtapes, like it does kind of take me back to being. 14, 15, in my fucking bedroom, listening to Art Bell, trying to record the stuff on tape. That's just like the backstory to why I fucking do this. On my special combo line, you are on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, where are you? I'm in California. California. We have an echo. Hold on a minute here. Let me see what I can do about that. Uh, let me try it now. That should be better. You're in California. Yes. All right. Uh, do you fit into the category of a man in black, a time traveler, or one who possesses a time machine? I'm in the men in black. You're a men in black? Yes. I'm shocked that I am getting so many men in black. Now, I thought never would I get a man in black because they are so secretive, uh, so many levels, no doubt, above top secret, that we could never get one to call, and yet here you are. Here all right. I am. Yes, all right. Um, may I ask uh, how one might go in behalf of a faxer about getting a job uh, with the men in black? Is there a way one can apply? Uh, there's not really a way you can apply for a men in black. You kind of fall into it. This um, is just you, one of those, they come to you or? Well, you, you go through certain levels. You, I, I started out in the military uh -huh. as just a regular, you know, went through boot camp, uh, Sure. You know, went in the military, went to a special service, and uh, was given the offer, and I figured, what the hell, I might as well try it out. I mean, I was single, I had no family. Um, well, so what I, did I have to lose? I remember it, when I was in the Air Force. Now, yeah. they used to post uh, job openings for um, a career field changes that you could apply for. Right. I mean, did you go into the barracks one day or the first sergeant's office, and there was a little thing saying uh, men in black openings? Uh, mm -hmm. No, no. I mean, uh, they, they don't recruit like uh, a guy at a boot camp. I see. I mean, you, you're not like a seaman apprentice or a seaman recruit when they say, hey, uh, how would you like to be a men in black? Uh, and normally, uh, most of the men in black are officers that are, are strictly given security clearances and they're told, um, you know, I'm sure you remember the old page 13 where, where you're told, okay, uh, you've given up your right to uh, be a normal American and have a normal... Uh, Yes. You know, rights of everybody else. I've heard that. And uh, so, I mean, what did I have to lose? I've, I've always wanted to know. I mean, I remember as a kid, I always wanted to know what was going on, and I figured this was the best course to take. All right. What is a general description, job description, of what you do? Well, you know, I, I listened to some of the other people uh, you had had on about the, the hierarchy and uh, yes. this and that. and. Uh, we are basically out there yes. to control secrets of the government, okay? I mean, a, a lot of times the secrets get out. But how do you sleep at night? I mean, going around intimidating people. Well, I mean, you wouldn't be intimidated by a men in white. Well, yeah, I, I mean, know, I understand that part of it, but I mean, I, actually intimidating them or worse yet breaking into a place and stealing evidence and that sort of thing. How do you sleep at night? How do you live with yourself? Well... Well, because basically, you know, from, from our point of view, we feel that national security of the United States is, is, is our prime motive. Oh, my God. There's been so much done in the name of national security, though. I, I know. I know. I mean, the people feel like they have a right to know. 
Well, they do have a right to know, but... Well, not, not according to you guys. You go around stealing evidence and covering things up and... Well, we don't per se. Well, in some, some instances we do steal God knows evidence. we probably even kill occasionally. But we look at the big picture of things. I mean, uh, say, you know, we were to let out that, okay, there's a carburetor out there that's going to get 125 miles a gallon. I bet you got a bun of, bunch of those. I, I well, just... we may or may not. I mean, uh, you know, there's there, there certain certain of us that, that work for oil companies and, and, and protect their interests. That figures. And there's certain of us that work for insurance companies to protect their interests. That there's certain figures. of us that work for energy companies. And, yeah. and you know, you know, uh, in fact, nuclear power is, is, is one of the interests that, we, that we've tried to, to go against. Because basically, you know, you can go through... In other words, you're on the side of the oil company, and you, you see nuclear power as a threat, a threat to the oil industry, and you're acting in behalf of the oil industry. And that, that was my, my prime job, was <sighs> for, for the oil companies. Don't you have guilt about that? I mean, we are polluting our air, our uh, environment is fouled, and you're protecting these old burners and, and providers of fossil fuels that are destroying our atmosphere. Well, I wouldn't be calling if I didn't feel guilty. Ah, so you're sort of like a man in black whistleblower, sort of. Well, not a whistleblower. It's just that uh, something occurred in my life that, that, that made me kind of look at the, the other side of the spectrum. What was that? Uh, I, I met a woman, and I fell in love and had children. Is that a not... Uh, is that generally uh, not a thing that a man in black would do? Uh, we're supposed to basically be on our own. Uh, no ties. This way we have no no commitments to other parties other than what, what our job is. You're, you're, you don't take vows of celibacy. <laughs> well, not not vows of celibacy, but... Uh, but they don't want you settling down. But they don't down want us settling down and beginning of the family thing. Makes sense and, uh, to me, sure. So... Uh, what happened is when I had children, I started looking at the big picture, and I, I said to myself, uh, you know, I, 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 have, I have children. You know, I have responsibility. I have, uh, you know, my, my kids, you know, when I'm in my, you know, I'm in my 60s, they're in their 20s, they're going to be going through things that, you know, I, I tried to stop from, from doing all, yes. all in the cost for money. Well, when you try to quit or uh, leave the men in black, is it like, I, I, I mean, in the mafia, you generally don't quit. You're terminated permanently. Yeah, and, and, and you know, you, you you think you're smarter and you can keep one step ahead. Yeah. But, uh, you know, sometimes people think they're so smart, and, uh, you know, I, I fell into the same hole where I told you, get screwed out of this one to be blatant. Well, you're a very heroic individual. Uh, are they going to continue the policy of... Uh, Promoting fossil fuels, hiding um, carburetors, pumping. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's, uh, it, as long as there's money there and there's people that can, you know, make it big, I'm sure they will. Is the ultimate boss of the men in black a woman in black? Uh, no. You, so that was false? Well, uh, uh, yes. Uh, there are no women in black per se. I mean, there's women in the community of of, of the the organization, but they're not. Uh, I mean, there may be women that are in charge of certain divisions or certain sectors of the organization, but uh, what would happen? What would happen now? You say the average man in black is not married, doesn't have family, children, that sort of thing, right? Well, yes. But he has no, all the normal urges of a man, right? Of course. So you would assume that he has a relationship, at least at some shallow level, with women. If a man in black would utter to a woman what he does for a living, and she she had knowledge of this, right? What would happen to her? Uh, well, if, if they, if I mean they don't, they don't. I mean, constantly monitor us. I would assume I, 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 everything would be okay unless it was a plant, and, you know, to test our loyalty. They but, do. I mean, I, you know, I, with with the, the current woman I'm in love with, and I've had children with. I mean, I, I waited years and years. I mean. It, it, you know, it's not paranoia. It's more of, you know, I'm not going to get this person involved in what I do if, if I know it's going to hurt her in any way. And I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, you have found a woman, and and that you are, you know, a soulmate. Yes. With, yes, indeed. And, and and you don't want anything to happen to that woman that would ever put her in danger. You're damn right. Because basically, what it boils down to is, I mean, love is the ultimate power. I mean, there's someone that you meet on the street corner, you see that, you know, you, you may meet 20 women before you, 
but it's that one woman that just kind of, for some reason, you just can't seem to stop thinking about. Well, that's love. That that's love. Love. Yeah. And and uh, I mean, I, I I wouldn't want my and, wife. Look, yeah, obviously, you're being heard now by millions. Your old bosses huh, are listening. Obviously. What would you say to them? Uh, too late now, isn't it? I mean, uh, granted, that there's a certain amount of skepticism with people listening to your show. Yes. I mean, they, they take a little bit for uh, being truth fact, uh, kidding around, joking around. Yep, sure. Uh, but, it, you know... It, what, what could you say, if we were to say to you, we doubt what you're saying, we don't believe you, what could you say that would help us believe you? Well, look at what the government has come out with over the few years, okay? The CIA has admitted uh, that they, yes, indeed, did plant stories about UFOs to cover the U-2 spy planes and the SR-71. It's true. It's true. Uh, they did indeed do tests on um, African-American males to see how they would react to uh, uh, sexual experiment. diseases. Yeah, and that's true. Bad kids, plutonium, it goes exactly. on and on and it's on and terrible. on. So, in other words, if we... If, if we embrace that as the truth, then then we should embrace what you are saying as the truth. It is Nothing easily is as believable. Yeah, it's you true. Know, you know, you got to look at everything that at the core of, of every conspiracy theory or everything that's going on. There is a certain amount of truth. I understand. And and you know, there, you know, I, I would not fault the, the people that that make these decisions because to them they're looking they're looking. Uh, the United States has to be number one. Can okay? I ask you? Can I ask you a really hard question? Sure. As a man in black, okay, have you ever had to take a life, kill? No. You don't have to. Have you ever had to rough somebody up? Uh, not so much rough somebody up, uh, but I mean, standing in a street corner, following someone, stalking somebody, you know, dressed in a black suit with black glasses and staring at someone, and always being there. Yep. I mean, letting them know that you're there is enough to. to, to you know, give someone the willies. So the job, then, is intimidation. Well, why not? I mean, it's the same as a, a police officer. You're driving down the road. Yeah, that's true. You see a cop hanging out on the side of the road. Are you going to speed up to 70 miles an hour? Or are you going to slow down at 55? I mean, it's deterrence. Oh, there's no question about it. I mean, if you were to look out and see at the edge of your property some black skulking figure with a black hat and a black suit and... Uh, I, as a matter of fact, you know, it's funny. I had a caller not that long ago who said that he saw a man in black. It's when we were doing the show on that. And he said he looked down and he saw this man in black. And he stood there and watched him until finally the man in black raised his hand and simply pointed, acknowledging that it was that man that he was there watching. In other words, it was the finger of... Intimidation. Exactly. And that's all it takes in most cases, huh? In most cases. And then uh, and another thing we do is, I mean, once the evidence is gone, yes. how are you going to prove it's one against the other? Okay? My word against yours. That's right. God, and, uh, I mean, uh, the media... Listen, I mean, I, I, I've got to go. Okay. I've got to go. But uh, I, you sound like the real deal to me, all right? Okay. Thank you very much, and we will talk with you once again. Another man in black. Intimidation. I, I always thought that was their real job.